Hello children, as we have been talking about the diseases, symptoms, various uh, types of pathogens etc. Today also we are going to cover this topic and under this topic we are first going to discuss the disease effects. Now there are three types of specific disease effects. The first effect can be called as organ or tissue specific uh, effects organ or tissue specific second effect can be called as a common effect and the third type of disease effect uh, in this we can say severe effect now in this category of uh, organ tissue specific effect actually what happens is microorganisms they enter the body through different points like nose mouth sex organs etc which decides the organ or tissue that microorganism invades at the same time the signs and symptoms of an infectious disease also depend upon the tissue being involved for example if bacteria causing tuberculosis enters through nose it invades respiratory passage and lungs and its symptoms are cough and breathlessness but in some cases they may infect other organs also now let us come to the point common effects. This category includes effects like inflammation and with swelling, reddening and pain in infected area and increase in body temperature occurs. This effects arise due to the active involvement of immune system to provide defense to body by producing some specific chemicals from WBCs against that microbe and this is not confined to a particular organ or tissue but seen in the whole body. Now, let me talk about the severe effects. The severe effects directly depends upon the number of microorganisms. If microbes are smaller in number, their effects are minor and can be overcome by our immune system in a lesser time. But if the number of microorganisms in, inside the body is very high, the effects are more severe and long lasting. Now, let us come to another subtopic of this chapter diseases that is treatment how the infectious diseases can be treated especially here we are talking about the treatment of infectious diseases infectious or they can also be called as a communicable diseases now the basic concept behind the treatment process is to target the biochemical pathways occurring inside an organism for this Certain drugs like antibiotics are prepared to alter or stop the biochemical reaction of microbes at the same stage to stop them to produce infections, toxins or to kill them or to check their further growth and multiplication. Now there are two ways in which these diseases are treated and these two ways are the first is reducing the symptoms, reducing the symptoms and the second important way is by killing the infectious agents. Now if I talk about the reducing the symptoms by this infection is not cured but some of the symptoms like fever, pain, ache, inflammation it can be reduced to make the patient full comfortable. This is done by medicines like painkillers, paracetamols etc. Now on the other hand, reducing the symptom is a temporary relief. On the other hand, uh, killing infectious agents. Under this category what uh, will happen? Uh, actually we can say this can be done by targeting the biochemical pathways of infectious agents using specific drugs. Now specific drugs like uh, many painkillers, antibiotics are used. Now let me talk about those specific drugs and antibiotics. Let me first talk about the drugs. Now these drugs, these are the chemical compounds. Drugs are actually the chemical compounds that targets a particular reaction among the chain of reactions involved in the biochemical pathway by reacting with some substrates of that reaction and resulting in an undesirable product so that the reaction cannot be proceed and stop infections and can kill the microbes they do not affect the human cells point to be uh, noted children here that these drugs they do not affect the human cells they affect only the pathogens
Now let me talk about the antibiotics. Antibiotics are actually the chemicals which are obtained from the microorganisms. These are obtained from microorganisms and these are used to kill or stop the growth of certain other kind of microbes. They help our body to fight against diseases. Actually, if I talk about the discovery of antibiotics, there is a very important story about the discovery. Actually, antibiotics uh, were discovered first time in the 1928 by a well-known scientist, Sir Alexander Fleming. Sir Alexander Fleming and he has dis discovered the first antibiotic penicillin. The first antibiotic discovered was penicillin. Actually there is an interesting story. What happened children is, uh, actually Sir Alexander Fleming uh, was doing some experiment and he has noticed that an agar plate, when it is inoculated with bacterium Staphylococcus aureus, Actually, he was doing some experiment uh, on this agar plate which provides nutrition to the microorganisms and this agar plate he has developed the growth of a bacteria that is named as Staphylococcus aureus. Now, after some time what he has observed is this bacteria was contaminated with a mold, contaminated with a mold and this mold has, uh, has shown its presence by clearing the zone of the bacterial growth. Now the breakdown of bacterial cells had occurred and detailed studies led to the isolation of inhibiting substance from the mold. As the mold was identified as penicillium, the mold which was identified it was penicillium. Fleming called the antibiotic penicillin. So this was the way how first antibiotic was discovered. After some time some other well known antibiotics discovered. For example, tetracycline, dramycidine, streptomycin, etc. Now these are the drugs specific for curing pathogenic diseases but are least effective for viral diseases. Point to be noted children here that antibiotics are least effective against viral infections. I will tell you the reason for this. Actually uh, if we talk about the functioning of the antibiotics what do they do? They seizes the formation of cell wall or interferes in their metabolic activities like the production of protein. And these skills are stop the growth of microbes. Now, this, what we have said is antibiotics are not effective for viruses or it is difficult to make antiviral uh, diseases because viruses are acellular entities because the reason is viruses are, are acellular entities which only have they only have a nucleic acid and a protein coat but they lack cytoplasm cell wall cell organelles now what we can say children is when the virus do not have its own metabolic machinery it uses the metabolic machinery of the host in which it is present okay fine when it is not having any metabolic machinery of its own, the antibiotics are not effective against the viral infections because what is the role of antibiotics? Antibiotics actually stop the metabolic activity of the pathogens. Since virus is a pathogen but it is not having its own metabolic machinery. So antibiotics are not at all effective against the viral infections. So drugs, uh, these drugs or antibiotics are not effective against them. Now the next topic is prevention of infectious diseases. How can we prevent the, the, till now we have been talking about the treatment. Now how can we prevent prevention of infectious diseases? There are various means of pre prevention for 
infectious diseases they come under large two categories the prevention can be general or this can be specific now under specific preventive measure the term that comes is immunization and under general preventive measures the various points are included first is safe drinking water the second preventive measure is proper disposal of waste the third general preventive measure is control of vectors fourth is having a strong immune system now we'll take this immunization afterwards let me cover the general preventive measures first now if we talk about the safe drinking water now drinking water should be filtered to remove suspended particles and void ozonized and treated with chlorine before drinking to avoid water borne diseases like typhoid cholera hepatitis etc if a water is a safe and it is pure then it will uh, not be a cause of water borne diseases so second point is proper disposal of it garbage should not be dumped here and there rather it should be thrown in covered garbage cans and burnt or buried for disposal sewage carrying drains should be covered for proper treatment of diseases of stomach and intestine now vectors as you know children there are many vectors present in the atmosphere like flies mosquitoes etc so growth and breeding of animals like mosquitoes rats flies cockroaches should be controlled by keeping the surroundings clean spraying insecticides removing stagnant water from polluted areas now strong immune system our body actually what is immune system let me explain it to you first our body possesses a special type of defense mechanism which is called as immune system now it provides resistance against disease causing microorganism immunity is the ability of the body to resist the infections two specific type of cells are present in our body that provide immunity these are the wbcs these are called as white blood cells and we can also call them leukocytes and the second type of cells they are called as lymphocytes these two cells they provide the or they together make up the immune system of our body as what is the role when any foreign body attacks our body these cells are released to all the parts of body they isolate engulf kill and digest the infectious agents and thus defend our body against any type of infection so if i talk about the strong immune system a very strong immune system helps to defense our body against invading microbes and it can be made strong by proper diet and nourishment so immune system uh, children you have understood what is that immune system that resistance against disease that is called as a immune system i write here also immunity is what it is the resistance against diseases or infections and there is a uh, natural immune system also and immunity can be provided or it can be improved uh, from outer mechanism also and that is immunization process that we'll talk about in the next lecture that is the specific immune uh, specific preventive measures we'll talk about this in the next lecture okay thank you